Welcome to the Executive's Lounge. This is your podcast host, Christine Fauner. I am bringing you amazing stories from amazing women in leadership from across the globe. Let's get started. Heads up on this episode. We talk about grief, loss, trauma, child death, and other sensitive topics that may be difficult for some of our listeners. Please listen with care. Well, I'm coming back from an amazing trip down at Havasupai Falls in Arizona, where I got to really spend some time hiking and doing some self-reflection and really got in touch with my mind, body, and spirit out there. It was such a special experience. I'm back here in the studio. And today I'm here with Dr. Deb Davies, and she comes to us from San Diego, California. Deb is a clinical supervisor and is also a mentor at Push Professionals, where she trains acupuncturists to become experts in pregnancy, birth, and postpartum support. After passionately following her calling by supporting thousands of families naturally through their pregnancy, birth, and postpartum journeys, Deb now focuses on her online mentorship program, and she is the best-selling co-author of the book, Infertility, Secrets, Struggles, and Successes. And if you don't get enough of her today on our podcast episode, Dr. Deb is going to be joining me as a special guest at the October 10th Roam Your Soul Virtual Social Hour. Information on Deb's book, how to RSVP for the social hour and information from her website will be in the description of this podcast episode. So don't forget to look there. Deb, I know it was a mouthful, but oh my goodness, how exciting to have you here today. Welcome. Thank you. What a beautiful intro. And it's lovely to see you again. Oh, it's so great to chat again. You know, when I was really thinking about coming back into this conversation. And, you know, if you've been part of this podcast journey with me, you know that I kind of do a screening and I get to know people. And typically that's a 15 to 20 minute conversation. But Deb, you and I chatted for, I think, over an hour when we first met. And it was just so energizing. And so I can't even put into words what all we talked about. I feel like we ran the gamut. Pretty much. There's a lot to say. We could talk about a lot of things. There's a lot to say. Where should we start today? A little bit about me. I was uh, born in California. And when I was 29 years old, I got pregnant with my first baby. And unfortunately, my baby died at term in utero uh, due to umbilical cord accident and I had to give birth to a dead baby so it was the worst thing that ever happened to me it rocked me to my core um I wouldn't wish that upon my worst enemy like it was terrible and so that really is the, the start of my professional life and like why I do what I do why I am so passionate about Uh, women's health and perinatal care, especially uh, around pregnancy, birth, and postpartum. So I did go on to have uh, another kid and I have a beautiful daughter, thank thank goodness, and she's lovely. Yeah, now I specialize in perinatal care and it's my extreme passion and honor to support the families that I get to support. Uh, I had a private practice for several years that I sold last year so that I could teach and affect more people and be able to help more families and more women uh, around the world, really. I think it's really amazing to come from this place of loss and just this real rocking of your center to really try to help others Uh, not just avoid that, but find joy in the birthing and the pregnancy journey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's struggle is real. And, you know, unfortunately, one in four pregnancies do end in loss. So working in this industry, that's something that I've had to deal with many, many times. And because of my firsthand experience, I Feel like I may have been able to handle that better than somebody else without that experience or that training. And so I've helped lots of women through subsequent pregnancies after losses. And now I'm teaching, you know, at various schools to help all the acupuncturists of the world understand uh, and not be afraid of treating pregnancy. Um, Chinese medical schools, it's a, a lot of like what not to do, what to avoid, and so I want to come in as a like confident 
presence and teach, what do you do? Yeah. You know, I talk a lot about <clears throat> the difference in decision-making that when we are in a place of fear, making good decisions is actually really hard. But when we're in a place of love and care, we may not be making the exact right decisions, but we'll be making good decisions. How do you help people come out of a place of fear and into a place of confidence and care? For these women who go through these hor horrific losses, empowerment to help them understand their bodies better, to get better in touch with their bodies, you know, when something might be amiss and really learning things that they can tune into um, that really help them to get and stay pregnant. Just for instance, like getting enough sleep. Are they getting eight hours of sleep a night? So it's something they can do and or coming for acupuncture regularly or getting therapy regularly or joining a support group or any combination of those things. But really, you know, it takes a village to to have a baby. So it's time to teach people to call in their village and to ask for help when you really need it. Yeah. When you touched on too, what authentic self-care can look like, tell me why acupuncture is your passion place. I grew up, um, I lived in California. I lived in the suburbs of Philly and my mom would take me to the doctor at anything wrong. And I would go to the doctor and I would sit and I would wait sometimes two, three, four hours, whether we had an appointment or not, didn't matter. We would get into a room, wait some more, and typically see the doctor maybe five minutes. And he would give us a prescription and would send us on our way. And he was fat and he smelled like smoke. And I was always blown away by this. This is ridiculous. So I met an acupuncturist and received acupuncture my first time while I was in college getting my bachelor degree. And I wound up working for this woman and helping her run her office right out of school. And I was blown away by all the things that she was able to help. This was in the suburbs of Philly. This is back in the 90s. I was able to see a lot of support, things I never knew possible. And so like, I believe in Western medicine. If I get into a car accident, I'm going to go to the hospital. In the field of obstetrics and gynecology, I believe Chinese medicine excels over Western medicine. I do. We have more options, you know, to regulate menstrual cycles, not just dish out the pills like it's candy. Our healthcare supports and services are starting to shift and change, you know, to, to better understand women's health, women's bodies, women's driven science you know, to, to a layman. To somebody who's never experienced acupuncture, why does it work and what is it? Well, acupuncture is all about balance in your body. So if you have pain or disease, even infertility, you know, is a, a thing, there's something out of balance. And so what we do is one, we feel your pulse and we feel with three fingers on both hands and it relates to 12 main organs in the body. What we're feeling for is not just, is it fast or slow? There's 28 specific pulse qualities that we study and they mean different things. And that helps us diagnostically. Also, we look at someone's tongue. So the tongue is the only muscle you can see outside of the body. And it gives us an understanding of our internal state of health. My demographic is it's been mostly fertility, pregnancy, birth, postpartum. I just believe there is so many things that we can do. Anything that we put in and on our body is the fuel for our body and our potential babies. So sometimes having conversations about lifestyle that might even have nothing to do with acupuncture, but things like, you know, our cleaning products, our skincare, hair care, beauty care, makeup, you know, all those things to really recognize as potential hindrances of our health there's there is so much empowerment that we can do by having conversations and supporting uh for me especially women through their perinatal journeys i was just thinking about um you know that you've gone from you know this tragic place of loss to having that really drive you into a passion place for helping other women and now you've you've become this really advanced expert in this field 
how do you maximize your strengths and expertise now in the work that you do to really impact and influence in the communities that you're touch pointing? Wow, that's really wonderful. I love that question. I close my practice. I honestly realize I can only see 30, 50 women a week, one-on-one. And I am working on creating a social media presence. I am working on more online classes. I am, you know, just teaching both nationally and internationally students, specifically acupuncturists that want this kind of support. And that doesn't really exist. So I've kind of found a niche and uh, I'm making myself available for one-on-one coaching to acupuncturists And I want to teach the acupuncturists because then they can go out and heal all the people in the world. So it's really fun to be able to teach the future generations um, about women's health and help them build confidence in how they can, you know, I tell all my students, let's get your menstrual cycle calculated and then imagine the story you're going to have to share with all your patients later on. Part of doing this podcast is really helping redefine what leadership is to women. And I think we've been conditioned to believe it's a certain thing about power and control or or being the C-level executive or you know, um, being advanced in our career pathways. I've climbed the ladder. But really in the redefinition of leadership, I talk a lot about the impact and influence for the greater good. And I think it's really interesting to hear you recognize that you needed to give up your private practice, something that you owned and had power and control over, something that you were utilizing for your career to impact and influence and saying, well, actually, that's not that's not enough. I, I actually want to teach the teacher that redefines what leadership is a bit, I think, in my world when I perceive you anyways. I take my job really seriously and I feel honored to be able to influence the future generation of doctors because acupuncturists are doctors of Chinese medicine. I got a fire up, you know, going on that I just have to share this because nobody else has. And as I think is because of my loss, I'm so, so passionate about this that this is what I need to do in my lifetime. It's it's beautiful that I figured it out and sad that I had to suffer such a tragic loss. But in return, I've developed my career and found my calling and my ability and love to help so many people. And it's amazing because I make myself available to my students. So they're the ones texting me. I have a patient with this or that. And, you know, instead of the patient. So it's it's nice. It's it's freeing. It's it's moving to the next level. So yeah. uh, Well, and I think too, just the amount of people you've helped experience joy in this process or joy in, you know, being a woman, joy in owning your own body and learning about it in a way that um, creates life. That's pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. and, And just being in touch with their body and not feeling shameful for their body for whatever reason and then if they have a loss that they're not blaming themselves like there's just so many things so many well, and I think there's just so much like societal conditioning around our bodies anyways I mean we didn't even own our own bodies until a certain decade in, in societal advancement if you will it took me a while to get in touch with my own body and understand it and learn about it and try to seek better experts right like you had mentioned the 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 overweight male doctor that smells like cigarette smokes who has no idea what your body's going through to move from that as a child to really seeking out expert level support is huge and I think a lot of us learn it a little a little later than we wished we would have Mm -hmm. but we mentor down right we want we want to mentor people up People are very disconnected with themselves, their bodies, their minds are, so, you know, and they're just on autopilot doing the thing, raising the kids, going to work, you know, just doing the, doing the darn thing. And 
they're so out of touch. And so when I have the ability to see somebody in clinic or acupuncturist is seeing somebody that interpersonal connection, and you can start to talk about things like, well, what about this? Or what about if you change that in your life? Because acupuncturists don't have magic pills, but we actually all had a class about heal the healer. And it's like, you've got to work on yourself. And so there yeah. is always that own personal growth and development and, you know, I want to lead by example. And so I went hiking three and a half miles this morning, you know, that was exhausting, but I did it. <laughs> and, you know, my health is important to me. We talk about things that we're passionate about and we, you know, I know this is a life purpose for you. I think sometimes the challenge feels in being heard, right? You have this big message. Has it been a challenge to get the voice out? It really has. I mean, I have been in the industry for a really long time and I think a TED talk is in the mix. I'm working on learning how to utilize social media to share my message so that it's heard. You know, you you spoke about going hiking and as you know, my community is based on two pillars. One is uh, women in leadership and the other is utilizing adventures to create transformational learning opportunities for ourselves. Do you have an adventure or an experience that you can share with us that was transformational for you? So once I became a licensed acupuncturist, you have to do continuing education, which means 25 hours every single year, you have to continually educate yourself, go to a conference, take a class, whatever. So I uh, had always been connected with Pacific College in San Diego, and I always got free entrance to their annual conference. And so at, after I was out of school a couple of years, I was like, I need to really think about who I'm going to study with, where I want to travel, what I need to learn, where I'm going to go. I found this one woman I was studying with for several years, Claudia Sikovitz. She's an acupuncturist in New York, and uh, she was doing acupuncture and labor and delivery at NYU Hospital, took all of her classes, really fun. She has her high level class, 50 hours in the hospital at NYU um, in labor and delivery. So I grabbed two of my colleagues at the time. I was like, let's go. We're doing it for me, having somebody who had more, way more experience than I did and being in the hospital setting in labor and delivery. And I realized I know way more than her, that I was the senior student in this situation. And that I, and when I asked my teacher, like, teacher when we had to lunch the last day what do I teach what do I do next like which class of yours do I take she's like you took them all you need to teach go you know get your own interns teach and and that and I have been doing that ever since so I thank her for that and that was what a moment to favorite. realize that you're no longer the student you're the teacher yeah yeah Obviously, there's reasons for having medical attention if something goes sideways, but I'm just curious, you know, is there is there spaces and places where you consider, ah, this would be better to do in hospital or this would be better to do at home or in a, in a clinic or is there any process thinking around that? Initially, it makes me think of like, what are the pros and cons of giving birth at home versus giving birth in a hospital? You could <laughs> yes. go to Yelp, sounds, you know, it sounds like, overwhelming and, to me. <laughs> and, and just start a perinatal acupuncturist. Yeah. And talk to them. Most people will offer a free 15 minute consult. You can do it over Zoom. Ask questions. Find out if you like them. Find out if they're open to this or that or the other. Um, not all acupuncturists are created equally, just like not all doctors are created equal. Acupuncturists do practice in various settings. Some acupuncturists will practice out of their home and have a home office. And some acupuncturists work in a clinic. Most acupuncturists have a clinic. And so a person going to acupuncture for the first time would expect a professional doctor-like office with a waiting room, possibly receptionist, bathroom, you know, uh, an exam table. Uh, and then hopefully that person has really good bedside manner, which I think is one of the things that separate perinatal acupuncturists from regular acupuncturists, people that have been there, done that, that understand the ins and outs of how challenging infertility can be, the high-risk pregnancy that they're going through, whatever it is. 
And then some acupuncturists work for hospitals and there is very few, I feel like in the US, but sometimes, for example, in, in relation to birth, I can go to a birth as an acu doula and, and do acupuncture, but it depends on the hospital. In terms of like pros and cons of why somebody would do a home birth versus a hospital birth is very personal decision. But one of the things I think it's important to share with people, especially women in the United States, is that did you know that you could have a midwife care for you if you and or your baby are normal and healthy versus having an obstetrician care for you? Because OBs care for sick moms and or sick babies. You shouldn't see an OB if you don't need one. In the United States, we have 90% OBs caring for women. So a very small percentage of midwives. Midwife is like unbelievably educated and intelligent and they support natural birth. And if you look at like, you know, for thousands of years have women been having babies where they conceive the babies. So well, and, and if you look at the history of the United States in regards to pregnancy and birth, midwives and doulas for thousands of years were the answer um, and, and that we didn't go to the hospital and it didn't shift until, you know, really the early 1900s, I want to say 1920, 1930s. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the development of the American Medical Association in the 1920s. And, yeah. you know, that's kind of how it went. And then they were starting to like demonize midwifery care. And it was like poor people have midwives and stuff. And so the, the, the thing that I think about now is so I was born in the 1970s. And when I was born, the cesarean rate in the United States was seven to 12%, which is a normal life saving uh, procedure for mom and or baby. So fast forward to today in the United States, our C-section rate is 32.1%. So one in every three women are having major abdominal surgery to give birth. And now the World Health Organization says 10 to 15% max is what's safe for a C-section rate for our country. So we are more than double that rate. And, and just to take it a step further, the United States has the highest maternal mortality rate of all developed nations in the world. And so what that means is that 24 out of every 100,000 women in the U.S. are dying in and around giving birth. Our numbers are rising recently. Over the last five years, it went from 17 to 23.8 is our current number. And if you look at other countries like France or Germany or Israel, they have six or three is their number. So it's very concerning, especially if you're a woman of color. If you yeah, are that number goes up exponentially three or four times more likely you and or your baby to die in and around birth. So it's just it's horrifying to me because with all the technology, all the money, all the education we have in the U.S., what is going on? And I it's a great question. What is going on? And there's you know, I, I think sometimes when we look at the advancement of U.S societal norms, we lost so much expert historical knowledge from elders, from healers, from, you know, from people who spent thousands of years, you know, sharing this information down generation, down generation, down generation. We've lost a lot of that. And I think we are bringing, we're trying to bring that back and we're, we're really recentering but I, but it's it's really scary to think about that in connection to to mother mortality rates. As an acupuncturist, maybe we could potentially help because I'm also a doula and attend births. So when I teach my Israeli students, um, I le looked up their maternal mortality rate, which was three, when our number is twenty three point eight. And so I asked the students, why is that? How come your number is so low and ours is so high? And one of the uh, students gets on and she says, well, um, in Israel, all of the hospitals have acupuncture departments where they have eight to 12 acupuncturists and they circulate between labor and delivery, the emergency room, post-op. I feel like, wow, that says to me that we have space to grow. 
I just think it's so important for people to recognize where you're giving birth is really the biggest decision of your life and to consider looking up cesarean rates or induction rates of that hospital and get an idea and see if that is in alignment with what that mother wants because I believe that mom should choose she it's her body her baby her birth and unfortunately there's a lot of management happening in labors and a lot of birth trauma coming out of labors and words like obstetric violence and things that didn't exist or wasn't discussed at least until recently and having seen thousands of women over the last two decades go through this process and tell me their their stories of their birth because I always would ask and have them come in sobbing and telling me you know horror story after 99 percent of the time it's really it's really concerning and so this is why I feel like I need to tell more people I need to speak wow I would guess that people listening wouldn't have thought acupuncture can make this big of an impact. Yeah, I guess you don't know unless you try. You don't know till you know what you know. I would try, you know, try it if you're thinking about it. For me, it just never ceases to amaze me. It, it really doesn't. Like, it's not me, it's the medicine. Yeah, well, and if I wasn't an advocate before, I'm an advocate now. I'm so glad to be able to share your message and your expertise with this community and these listeners. And I'm really looking forward to continuing the conversation and continuing to help you advocate out to the women that need you. Thank you for having me. It was really fun to talk to you again. And I look forward to continuing the conversation. We'll see. Thanks for joining us today in the Executives Lounge, where we bust open the doors, slam through the ceilings, and make sure that we have a spot at the table and that we are the lounge. I am Christine Fauner, your executive leadership expert, continuously looking for those executive leaders that seek community, continuous learning, and have a desire to find the next adventure. Join us next time. Join our Facebook group, Roam Your Soul. And you can also find us on Instagram at Roam Your Soul. And don't forget to check out the website for upcoming adventures, www.roamyoursoul.com. And if you're looking for that next executive level leadership coach, you can find me at roamyoursoul.com slash Christine Fawner Coaching.